welcome back to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Uh, welcome all returning viewers. I know there's only one other episode, but thank you. And welcome all new viewers. So there's only one episode you have to catch up on. Yay! <laughs> My name is Gabby, and I will be hosting. Uh, this is a knitting, crafting, sewing, puppy podcast. Um, you can find me everywhere as Gabigales on Instagram, fe- not Facebook, um, not really on Facebook, <laughs> Ravelry, Twitter, all the, all the fun places. Uh, we don't have the dogs here today. They are on a little mini vacation at my parents' house for a couple days. So we have Jax, our super now cuddly cat, who's probably just going to be climbing me the whole uh, time or trying to eat whatever I have in my hand. Usually he just sits in the background and glares at me because I took him away from his gram. So now we're cuddling. I don't know. So yeah, I guess with that, let's uh, start the show. So we have finished objects first and coffee since it is very early on a Black Friday. I have no intention of going out into the world. I have three, no, no ends woven in, but three finished hats for Jake's nephews, and I'm so excited to have these done. Um, it's a 2x2 two two ribbing top-down pattern I found on Ravelry for free. One of them's a little skinnier because it's got less stitches because one of the boys is three. I'm awful at judging children's ages. Everyone's at least four in my head. Sorry. So we've got three, one for each of them. So the Christmas knitting is almost done. We ended up deciding to get his new nieces mugs and hot chocolate because I thought they were all 12, and it turns out they range from like 5 to 16, so it's not, and I don't know how to knit for that. <laughs> um, what else do we have? We also have, my notes are down here, so if I keep just looking down, that's why. In our Once Upon a Corgi bag, with our little corgi, we have a finished sock. Ow! Stop! And claws in your leg. Ta-da! Just a plain uh, cuff-down vanilla sock with a fish lips kiss heel. And I did the star toe pattern. I should have put these on blockers. That would have been smart. I've been trying to look for a good pattern that I like. Because I don't like the pointed toe one. I feel like a villain in it. Also, ooh, wrong side. So, yeah. I'm excited for them. To be done. <laughs> I do love the way that the yarn is turning out, though. This is my first, I think, real, really nice variegation that I've managed to get an op on accident. And I managed to duplicate it, so that was nice. And it's um, on um, my sparkle base that I dyed up. Uh, so 70 superwash merino, 20% uh, nylon, and 5% stellina, I want to say. And um, I posted them on Instagram, and somebody so kindly pointed out that I twist my stitches, which I had no idea was a thing. I just thought that's how I knit. I just accepted it. So thankfully, I was able to correct it, but now I do have these weird, super twisty, um, like, ribs almost while I'm trying to figure out how I did that, because I had no... I mostly self-taught. My mom taught me. I forgot, and then I retaught myself in college via the internet, so I just sort of, whatever made it fabric, I went with it. So, thank you. Now I can actually fix my knitting so it looks proper. So those are my four finished objects. We have many works in progress because I didn't want to do Christmas knitting anymore, so I started, don't, don't climb on the table, um, started working on a bunch of other stuff. Come here. So this is Jax. He's a three-year-old cat. We'll do a quick introduction for him. He's um, my boyfriend's. Our friend was cat-sitting a manager's cats while he was on vacation while we both, both worked at Perducci's, and she accidentally got her boss's cat pregnant. So Jax, it was the little terror of the litter, and now he's ours. He hates me. <laughs> Come here. All right, works in progress. We have Throwing needles. Almost a finished sock. 
same deal, cuff down, fish lips, kiss heel. Um, this is where I was Sunday, so I managed to turn the heel. Now I'm about halfway done with the foot. So, and now we have a cat on our back. Oh yeah, is that what you're gonna do? Nope, that's the painter makes ball. So, welcome. Hey, yo, get out of my water! <laughs> Cats. Yes, I know. I know. Uh, next work in progress, I sort of took out of hibernation. I started this a while ago and then um, put it down to work on Christmas knitting. But these are my, I call them my dog park socks because I can knit on them while I walk around the dog park with the puppies. Um, they're blueberry waffle sock. Uh, free pattern on Ravelry. I'll put a link in the show notes. So I have one done. Uh, fish lips kiss heel and I did the star toe on this one. And it is out of um, Lamb's Pride Superwash Sport in their oyster shell colorway. Oh, I always do the wrong hand. Yeah. I got this on um, a yarn crawl weekend I did with my brother and mom. And it was our first stop at the yarn store closest to their house. And it was one of the only things I could afford. But it was super nice. It's super thermally it's gonna they're gonna be so toasty so I'm hoping I can finish these before real winter starts and not this 50 degree loveliness I'm not mad don't I'm not mad I don't want real winter to start but I want these done before it does so these are now my back to my dog park socks so I can run around with the puppies put those back and then we have, I'm so excited for this, working on our Verdu shawl by Isabel from the Fluffy Fibers, and it's a tangled mess, I apologize. And I finished the body, I did the larger size, because I knit so tight I was afraid that if I did the smaller size it would just be like a little napkin, so I did the extra, I think, 11 rows maybe 13 rows, and I started the lace pattern. It's still a little BB, but it's coming along. Oh, it goes this way. Oh, look at that. That's nice. That worked out. I did, however, have to restart the lace pattern four times. It wasn't the pattern at all. It was, I read the written directions, and I just kept messing it up, and then I switched to the chart, and everything just sort of see cat hair floating around my apartment. <laughs> I switched to the chart and everything just sort of magically clicked and it was wonderful. So apparently I can only chart knit lace. So I did about three repeats of the lace. So I have a, I have a little ways to go. But it is part of my make too long from, ooh, I totally forgot to do that. Way to go. Uh, it's from my make too long for um, the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast with Jenny, who was super kind and did a shout out on her podcast this past week. So thank you, Jenny, who is too kind. And it also helps me get a couple new podcasts. So I'm going to do a little section at the end with new podcasts that I've listened to because I listen to too many. So I have plenty to refer you to if you want. But it is out of my, this is all over the place this morning, uh, Dark Like My Soul colorway on my sparkle base. And it's not as dark as I wanted it to be, but I'm not mad with how it's knitting up. And I started doing alternating skeins, because I just because I did the bigger um, size, I was afraid I would run out and then have to knit like two repeats in a different yarn and have it be completely noticeable. So it looks good. I'm not mad. It's a little tangly, but it's good practice, I think. If I can do it on lace, I can do it on anything, right? So, that is that, and I'm super excited. It is, I'm sad that it's no longer a trade knit, because I do have to sit there and pay attention to each stitch, but it's a good bedtime knit. What else? Oh, we have another thing I pulled out of hibernation in a uh, fight to not Christmas knit, which is out of one of my first learning how to make project bags things. 
I clearly didn't follow any directions on anything. It's gonna be a sock bag once this gets too big, but it's my cozy memories blanket. I feel like everyone's been pulling these out lately, so I figured it was only, only right. So, not a lot. It's about the size of a do small dog, so I am adding, I've got these three are all from a swap I did. Um, they're all Opal or Regia yarn, I believe. No, it was just sort of a, she just put a little note in, but it's a little bit, a little bits and scraps. I got a bunch of these from my brother because the only sock yarn I had from the past 10 years of knitting was these two. And so this was my first pair of socks I ever made. And then I knit this into a little heart. Oh, I forgot to grab that. I should grab that. So, yay! It's getting there. I do have a bunch more minis to throw in. So the plan is to knit it as wide as I want and then start going up. So I'll just join the bad wagon and everyone's showing off their mini skeins. So that is coming along. Except, sad, sad. My US4 needles, I have Knitter's Pride, and I've never had this happen to any of the other ones, and I use these the most, so I don't know if that was just, they had a bad day, but my knitting needle snapped right at the metal base. So I'm waiting for Amazon to get back to me about replacements, but I might just go buy another set at a yarn store, just in case. And then I'll have two, but, so, blankets on hold, because I don't have the needles anymore. I only have one pair of each size, except a couple DPNs with, um, a couple size ones and zeros, and then a couple, um, DPN versus interchangeable for sleeves and stuff, but those are all new requirements. So, those are all my knitting works in progress. Now we have our sewing stuff. So for the other half of my make two along, which is you make or knit or sew or whatever you want to do, two pieces to go to make an outfit. So I did a shawl and I'm making a dress. So here's the bodice part of my dress. Um, I'm not using a pattern, sort of. I have a pattern for um, 1540s Tudor dress, so I'm taking the bodice part of that and cutting it out and then making it up as I go. So I'm gonna put a zipper in the back. Uh, I did a full circle skirt that's all cut out. So here's the fabric. I have a full dress made out of this already in the Tudor style and it looks so much like Belle so I just wanted another one. But I'm super excited. I have all the pieces cut out. I have the lighting put in. I'm gonna trim it up. I'm gonna attach the back and then I'm going to do a mock skirt because it's an invisible zipper and I've never sewn in one of those. So I have enough muslin cut out because I, once again, I don't read directions very well apparently with sewing projects. I made the skirt twice as big as I needed it to be. So instead of doing two panels, I think I can get away with just wrapping the one around me and still being able to pleat it a little bit. So I'm going to do a practice run with the muslin and then use the second half that I don't really need anymore is a lining because this is a very thin fabric and it is for yeah you can still see through it it's for um Christmas so I don't want to freeze to death but or I have a see-through dress that would just be awful so that's my one sewing project and then the next one still with the Tudor theme is I almost finished my fall sleeves for my dress so these will be lined with linen and they go into my gigundo sleeves and get tied up like this so this will be all closed up with buttons and then I'll have a little fake linen poof and little linen poofs and get decorated with um trim and stuff so that's exciting we do we have um the group's called the Society for Creative Anachronism um it's essentially a bunch of adults running around in pre-16th century clothes and doing pre-16th century things. So we'll do, um, like there's fencing tournaments, there's melee fighting, there's 
broadsword, there's like German long spear. There's no jousting, but they do have equestrian stuff. Like they'll have you like go around the poles and knock foam heads off stuff and you have to dance through. It's so cool. I wish I could do it. I don't have a horse, but I can I can dream. So my Yeah, it's just a bunch of adults LARPing, really, and it's fantastic. So we have a Yule Christmas ball coming up. So I decided for all my fancy garb, I'm doing Hogwarts themed. So I have a Gryffindor themed Tudor dress. Apologize for the lights too. Apparently this is too bright of a section. Let's see if we can no, nope, wrong way. Fix that. You can see my cheese it's. So yeah, I have a Gryffindor themed Tudor dress that I'm working on and I'm so excited. I'll try and put pictures up at the end, or if not, they're definitely on um, the website blog with all the show notes. So definitely put a link to that in it. Um, and that's it for sewing, but we do have some spinning because we decided we're going to give away some spinning as a Christmas present, so now we're trying to hustle through it. I'm sorry for the crinkling. I can't get this out. So, also there's sirens. So this is some of my experimental dye fiber. I'm spinning it on my hexagon top spin. Thank you. Thank you, Sirens. Black Friday's gotten out of control, apparently. I do live right next to downtown, which is filled with things like Pottery Barn. Excuse me, in West Elm. So I'm sure there's fighting moms everywhere. But this is um, Superwash Merino, Merino, and Silk. And it was just a hand-dyed experiment that I did. Um, I showed you a couple signals last time, so... I'm almost done with this. I broke everything up into 25 gram ounce? I forgot. I broke them up into tiny little nests, and the plan was to two ply them, but I think I'm gonna chain ply them. So I have that, I have one in progress, and then I finished one, and I just put it in this little nest. So we've got some greens, some purples, some blues. And I'm really liking the way it's turning out, and some little bits of white from the undyed parts. So, I'm excited for it. I'm hoping I can get a fingering or a spore weight, probably more of a spore weight after I wash it. But it's the thinnest I've spun, so that's good. It's sort of, you know, telling me I should probably buy more spindles. You can't have too many. So that's that. I have this spear of white coming into my head. Some, it's my anthropology mug. I bought one for my brother with an N on it, and then I realized I had to have one. So you can't have too many mugs either. So on to stash building. Um, we have a little bit this week because I did a couple. Um, I did a mini swap with someone, and she sent me all these itty bitty little beauties. I'm so excited, and a lot of these are, like, there's, um, I'm so excited for, I got a Miss Babs, never knit with Miss Babs, so, and her, Bernie? Berlin? Oh, Berlin, that's what that says. I can read, I swear. So, and then I managed, she gave me a bowl and vine yarns in her fairy hair colorway from, um, Kristen, she does the Yarngasm podcast. I've never been able to man to get an update every time I check. It's always like two minutes too late and there's nothing left. So I'm super excited to put this in there. And it's so soft. I don't know what base it's on. But I'm so excited to knit with it. One day I'll get a scheme, I swear. But she has um, the Orangasm podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes. And she does the Bull and Bun Yarns. I am hoping to get to her next trunk show. I manage because I figure if I'm at the yarn, it can't can't get cart jacked. So that's the plan. Um, yeah, she's got lots of gales. I should have planned this out better, but I'm super excited once I get some needles to get these into the blanket. And I love how well they all match. It's all the same like color palette. I like that. That's nice. 
So that was one skein swap. And then, I'm going to do this one first because I'm so excited and I want to touch it. Um, I was watching the Spicy Homemaker podcast with Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Um, and she did a prompt for her thankful, great, or grateful giveaway for all of the followers on her podcast. And the prompt was, what was your favorite part of, oh, you can see all my cheeses. Um, your favorite part of Ryan Beck, or if you couldn't go, what did you want to see? If you did win and you didn't have a budget, what would you want? So I told her I would have loved some of the Too Sexy Yarn by the Buffalo Wool Company because it's 50% buffalo wool, buffalo down, 50% silk, and it's literally the softest, most beautiful thing I've ever touched in my life. And I would wear only a bodysuit of it for the forever. So Ron from the Buffalo Wool Company sent me a message thanking me and asked for my address, and they sent me a skein of their Too Sexy, and it is so beautiful. Oh, it's just been, I just keep it like on my nightstand and on my desk. So when I walk by it in the morning before work, I can just rub it on my face. When I come home and it's a bad day, I just sit there and I snuggle it. And it's so wonderful. I think my plan for it is to get a couple of their minis sets and maybe do a nice little shawl out of it and do some lace borders with their minis in their too sexy lace base and then just never take it off. So this stuff is super durable. It's super warm. Alaska loves it from all of their stuff. They have a fantastic website explaining how like buffalo works and the care and their whole like process. So I want to make something that's gonna that I can like pass on kind of thing just because it's going to literally last forever and it just gets warmer and better as you wear it and you wash it and you love it so I thought about just we'll just start my bodysuit with it I just never want to not touch it it's so wonderful thank you so much <laughs> uh, I did never never would have occurred to me that this ever would have happened I've never been so happy Oh, I'm in love. It's so nice. So yeah, I'm thinking a shawl that I can just cuddle on all the time. I'm probably going to have to quit my job so I can be a full-time shawl wearer. That's it. Ooh, ooh, That's it. That's all. So thank you again, Buffalo Wool Company. They are a little pricey, but it's definitely worth every penny. So they also do um yarn, but they'll do, um they have patterns. And they have other, like, pre-made socks and hats and gloves. And oh, it's all wonderful. It's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put it down. So we're just going to put it down. Not next to our coffee. We're going to put it back here. And then another gigundo, gigundo thank you to Jenny from the Tiny Paper Foxes. For this wonderful thank you package, I sent her a bag because I made her a bag. I made bags for Rhinebeck for all the podcasts, for all the, yeah, basically all the podcasters that I watched that I knew of at the time. Little did I know there'd be so many new ones to watch. And I didn't, I found her, but my, my guts at that point were just like, no, run! So I didn't, like, chase her down and tackle her to give her this, but I made everybody a bag with little ske mini skeins in it just as a thank you for being a podcaster and just being so awesome and letting me watch you on the internet and talk about your yarn and sort of inspire me to do more knitting and sewing and start dyeing and stuff. So she sent me a thank you package back and I've already opened it and eaten all the chocolate. So here's, she sent me this chocolate and it was delicious. It was so good. Boyfriend was a little mad I didn't share any. And a card. And there's going to be crinkling, I'm sorry. These Andy Warhol stationery set, which I'm so excited to get into. Oh, I love them. I love these sassy little ladies. I don't even know what I'm going to put them on. 
but they're gonna be great wherever they are. I love her the best. I want her, her dress. I'm gonna make that one day. Um, some teas. You never have too many teas. I love tea. I just don't drink it enough. I drink more coffee. Excuse me. Tea doesn't have the caffeine that I need. So, I'm very excited for this one. Oops. I love fruity teas. It's gonna probably go in. I have a pink Disney princess mug, so I only put pink tea in it. Because what else would you put in a princess mug? I don't Duh. And a card. Lots of tissue paper. And then she sent me some minis as well. So I'm super excited to put those in there. I won't name all of them, but she did send me, if you watch her podcast, which you absolutely should, it is fantastically produced. I love Colin. He's just an adorable little alarm clock. And they do a section at the end with photo tips because her husband is a photographer, which I love because I am also a photographer. So I'll watch it and be like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. And then use that to solve whatever problem I'm having or just being like, okay, yep, still in the know, still got it. Not to fix that. What if I do this? Ooh, there we go. So, but in her latest one, she made mittens out of sea slug. And here's sea slug. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so cute. My boyfriend was extremely confused on why I was so excited. And I was running around the apartment screaming, I got sea slug! It's like, what are you? You guys are so weird. So... I'm super excited for all of these. And this looks like a little bit of hand spun. Maybe it's just very wooly. There's a lot of a halo, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It might just be me. It's very soft though. I'm super excited to get these into the blanket one day. It is Black Friday, so I could go to a yarn store and, you know, get into the shopping spirit. So that's it for Stash Builders. I believe and I guess now it's just on to um would be store updates and podcasts so store updates I don't have anything this week I'm gonna try and get um a holiday coupon code out for 15% off everything and just sort of empty shop because I do have ideas I want to start doing kits so a skinny yarn a bag maybe some stitch markers or a progress keeper kind of thing. Um, I have some ideas for themes, so I'm gonna hit up the fabric stores and see what there's around and then use those as inspiration for the yarn. I wanna do a vintage tea set, so with like tans and purples and pinks and browns and blues and greens and a speckly yarn kind of thing, so maybe in January? Give me some time to get some more yarn, get some dye time in. I do a vacation in December, so. My laptop is balanced on three textbooks, so if it keeps shaking, it's because I'm touching the table. So that's shop updates. So I will post an Instagram, the coupon code. It'll probably be something like holidays or bought fluff. So I'll put it on Instagram and I'll put it on the um, blog as well. So there's not a lot up there right now, just some bags and some yarn. So try and empty stock for the new year, make some room on my shelves. Um, podcasts, um, I mentioned the Tiny Paper Foxes and Spicy Homemaker. I love her. She's just such a carefree attitude about the right things. Like she knows, Melissa, she cuts back if she has to cut back on a project. Like, no, this is bad. I have to do it. But then sometimes she's like, yeah, well, this is going to be awesome anyway, so go for it. I just love that attitude. And she's so funny. She's so cheerful. I love her sense of when her kids are in trouble, when it gets too quiet in the background. And she's like, hold on. I got I to gotta check on this. So, hello, Melissa. You should definitely check out her podcast. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, I did get a message from Karen Elizabeth with her podcast link in it. So I watched that. She's only about four episodes in, but she is just the sweetest little thing ever. She does um, knitting, uh, sewing, and she does a lot of, um, I think she calls it handmade Hollywood section. She does a lot of refurnishing. She just did a chair. So she'll like thrift shop, pick up stuff, and then 
fix it up and I'm sorry for all the cat hair that's floating around. This is really weird. Um, but it's super, like, um, secondhand fixing and stuff, and she'll give you other blogs to go to, and, oh, it's, it's good. It was definitely worth the watch. So she's Karen Elizabeth at the Home Corner, I believe, podcast on YouTube. I'll put a link. Um, and then, uh, during Jenny's podcast, um, she listed a couple new podcasts that we all had one episode each. So I went through and I, um, I watched, I put them all on my subscription, but I only watched one of them so far, and that's the Knit and Sip podcast by Brittany. Um, she has two episodes out now, and I thought she was just fantastic. She's a new knitter, brand new, I believe. So it's been super fun, even with just the two episodes, watching how um, she's kind of figuring things out and learning, which is great, because, yeah, she's been... Um, Super fun to watch, even for the two podcasts, because she is still learning. So it's exciting to watch her kind of figure out her, like, what she wants to knit, how, she, like, what kind of her style is in knitting. Can you please stop kneading me? Here, you can do that. Sit, sit. So that's a new one if you want to check it out. He keeps kitten mittens kneading my leg and drooling on me. He's a weirdo. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, I think that'll be it for podcasts. That's that's a lot. I've already named like 500 today, so and last time. Um, watching, do little new new stuff when I'm watching and reading. Um, uh, we are watching Gotham, which if you are a Batman fan, I highly recommend. It's pre Batman, so when Bruce is little and it focuses on Jim Gordon and all the bad guys. It is very villain driven, and I love it. We have, like, the penguins in it, um, the Riddler is being formed, you've got little hints of the Joker, it's so good. We're finally caught up on everything, so we have one, um, episode left before the mid-season finale. Yes, I know. I know, you're drooling everywhere. You're such a little baby. So, um, and then we started watching Supergirl. Which is also turning out very good. We're only three episodes in, I believe, but I'm very excited to keep watching it. Um, so that's it for watching. Reading, I'm working on a book called The Paper Magician. Uh, I don't remember the author's name. I didn't write it down, so I'll put a link. It's super, it's good so far. I wouldn't say it's super great, but it is captivating. There's a little bit of slow parts, but I'm only in the first book. It's, um, uh... Magician world where you sort of you choose your medium and then that's it after graduation. So this girl um, Someone paid full scholarship for her tuition to go to this magical academy and so she Went for free so she sort of feels like she doesn't really have a choice in it So there's a little angstiness in that but she chooses she's Given paper as her medium so she can only use paper for her magic, but you can do like metal or water or fabric or something. So I'm only probably 32% in. It's on my Kindle. So, but it's a trilogy, and I'm super excited. Jax, please stop getting a TV. Um, to do that, and that's that. Yeah, I'm not reading a lot. It's lots of podcasts. It's really it. So. Yeah. Um, I did have... I'm going to set up a Ravelry group. Um, hopefully it'll be up when this episode is up. I have it sort of in the works. I'm just trying to get, like, a banner together for it. So I'll have all the show notes up in there. Um, so feel free to check it out and join. Um, and I think that's it. Um, I had... I was going to ask a question, but I forgot what the question was. So, maybe I'll put it in the Ravelry group at the end. I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, I wish I had more puppy stuff to show you. We don't have the puppies today. Um, we haven't really done that much. We did go to the park last weekend, so that was super exciting um, to actually be out of the house because they are in the apartment all day, which has no exterior windows except for the kitchen, 
and the bathroom and one in the bedroom, but the living room excuse me, doesn't have anything. So we like we try to spend most of the weekend at the park just to get them some fresh air and some sunshine. Um we also did something the other weekend. I like this two week schedule. I just don't remember what I was gonna write what I was gonna say. Hmm. And we did the puppy park. Yeah, that was it. Oh, we um Jake and I went to his sister's wedding, so that was really fun. It was at a carousel museum in an old factory in um a little bit north of us, so that was super exciting. They did it right in the middle of like the main exhibition. They sort of just blocked off all the sides and then just scat like scattered. There's so much cat here. I'm so sorry. Um, carousel pieces all around the museum. So that it was very like informal museum-y, but it was super nice to have the wedding in too because they just had the Christmas lights everywhere. They had the chandeliers. It was all antique stuff. It was good. It was really nice. Um, and that was, we did, oh, yesterday was Thanksgiving. So that was very nice to get out of our house and go visit family. So we went to my parents' house for most of the day for dinner and cooking because I wanted to watch the parade. So we had to be stationary by the time the parade started. I'm so sorry for all this cat hair. And then we went to his mom's house for dessert. And then we went home and uh, yeah, that was, that's, that's our weekly, that's our updates. So we're on vacation for a couple days and then we go back to work and then we start counting down till Christmas and we're so close. Now I start all my Christmas shopping. Oh, great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. So thank you for watching. All the show notes are going to be at onceuponacorgi.wordpress.com. Hopefully I'll have a little bit more structure and less uh, next time. So thank you for bearing with me. Uh, thanks for watching. And we will see you in two weeks. Bye.